Welcome to Subway, I'd always say in my friendliest voice, flashing my fakest smile. I've practically been wasting away in a subway in northern Nebraska for the last two years, working nine to five, making a whopping $9.62 an hour. My part-time position soon turned permanent after my divorce was finalized. She decided one day that she wasn't happy and it resulted in her taking everything and leaving. I haven't heard from her since. No one has. I suppose I shouldn't bore you with my origins though. That's not why you're here. That's not why I'm writing this. You see, this all started with my manager's pestering. He said he wanted to emphasize the company's open-mindedness to new creations. Had he even went as far as stealing other cus- restaurants' slogans, hanging handmade signs outside, saying, you can have it your way at Subway. We all pondered around the subject of his sudden enthusiasm for a store promotion, midlife crisis, divorce, corporate pressure, whatever the reason, he was crazy about the topic and he was driving us crazy talking about it. Eventually though, I was irritated enough one night to step out to the plate after hearing one of his many lectures on creativity. I introduced it as the senatorial sub. I told him it was an idea I came up with after Molly left and it was she just had more involvement in its creation than he'll ever know. It was a mundane sub, really. Lettuce, cheese, tomato, but it wasn't your typical beef in it. He was hesitant as the words left my mouth, but I reassured him by saying I raised cattle and I would supply it free of charge. And from that moment on, he was in. I'm sure you already know the story. I'm sure my face is being blasted all over the news. I'm sure you're calling me a sick bastard, but from that moment on, I had a moment of clarity. This gave me a purpose. And as the customers flooded in and complimented my work, my purpose only flourished into a duty. I obsessed over my cooking. For once, something I did was good. For the first time in those two years, I felt important, special, a key member, and no one could take that away. My schedule ran like clockwork. Once a week, I would get the meat, put it on ice until morning, and then take it to work. From there, I would wash it and heat it up and prep it for the day. No one questioned it, and I liked it that way. But today was different. Today, my co-worker, Abby, showed up early, leaving me unable to refill the stock of our new demanded item. Although, after tonight, I don't think it'll be on the menu much longer. By the time I had a chance to go back out to my car, the meat was already tainted. But I guess that's what I get for leaving it to sit in the sun. So I watched as our supply ran slim We sold our last senatorial sub to an elderly lady and we were forced to turn away customers who desperately asked for our new item. And as soon as Abby told me she was going on lunch, I knew what I had to do. As I stared at the customer eating the remnants of our supply, Hey, did that lady leave while I was on lunch? Her food's still there. Abby asked, pointing at the empty table with the food still in it. I think so. I think someone picked her up out front. Hey, did you see the new sign for Moe's out there? I replied in an attempt to divert the subject. By then, alarm bells rang in my head. I didn't clean up all the evidence. It was enough time. She came back from lunch early. I was lucky enough to wipe the knife clean. I was just out there. I didn't see anyone leave, Abby said. I'm going to check the bathrooms. As soon as I heard the bathroom door close, 
I grabbed my coat and sprinted out the door. As I opened it to leave, I opened it to the rest of my life. And I knew that soon, I stepped outside, I'd be a wanted man because it was only a matter of time until they find a woman's body in the freezer.